So okay. you had my introduction. I mean, you don't know, don't need to hear more about yourself. And yeah, what do you think about technical issues in architecture? <laughs> well, I mean, I think um, technical issues in architecture. <laughs> well, I suppose, I, I suppose going to Porto, I feel like it's going to be very a very analog um, experience in that uh, hopefully it'll be a lot about the experience of being in the school. And I'm hoping there's lots that we can learn from um, being in the building, which I, I, I mean, what I started saying earlier but got cut off was that um, the last time I was in the Caesar Architecture School um, was when we took the whole office to visit the building. And um, it's recently been in our thoughts because we are currently working on a, a project that is about the same size as the school dimensionally. It's the same kind of scale of territory. Um, which is sort of uh, which is sort of a scale uh, at the scale of the city it's it's big it's like for people that don't know it's like a sort of small very small campus but it's in different part it's like the faculty of architecture was done by alvaro Siza. so it has a very huge impact on the of on the urbanism of the city without being too big it's a sort of in between scale that's very very interesting no yeah and i think there's a lot of intimate moments within the school and so it feels like a journey between lots of episodes of architecture that are to frame different activities. And I'm very interested in how to work at a large scale uh, within the city, but nonetheless achieve um, a kind of high degree of intimate space in which uh, small groups can have I can meet that the conversations can be sustained and that this is a project at the scale of the city. I mean, a lot of, a lot of contemporary development you feel is unable to sustain um, a kind of intimate life. Uh, by intimate, I mean, I suppose the possibility of both being in uh, large public spaces surrounded by strangers, but also nonetheless being in small groups, being able to, sustain a conversation it's that uh, simultaneously being at both scales that I think the, the campus I remember did incredibly well and we were currently working on a, a building in Birmingham that is a kind of hybrid of market and office and workshops um, and surrounded by public spaces and so this is very much in our thoughts and something that yeah, perhaps we'll be looking at with the students. Yeah, and, and all the projects you've done until here were like a sort of human scale. Now you have you have houses, you have like uh, um, it's a lot of program related with art. So for you, it's a big big like jump in terms of scale. Now to have this big project. Yeah, I think at, at the moment we're working on three projects that are quite a lot bigger than the work that we started doing. I mean, as you said, we've been this is our 15th year in practice. And um, but one constant has been uh, collaboration with with artists. I think when we started the practice, most of our work was with art galleries, um, exhibition design, collaborations with artists. And as we've um, as the projects have grown in scale, uh, along with the practice, um, we've tried to sustain that um, a collaborative process and so in Birmingham we're working with a local arts organization Eastside Projects and we have eight artists uh, working on different parts of the project. And I think that's quite unusual and probably artists are you know, brought in quite late into um, architecture projects uh, but it, in this instance they've been involved since the beginning so um, you know, large fragments of the building have been co-designed um, and that feels like something that has only really been possible through this continued engagement with, with, with artists since the beginning of the practice.
Yeah, and that's interesting. This this fact of working the project in parallel with them and not just at the last moment is like you say you work with a local association is like, do they come to you because they know you have this big relation with art and architecture or are you the one doing the work to find them? You know what I mean? In this instance, um, we found them. Mm -hmm. But in fact, um, we uh, I, I knew one of the founding artists, uh, Celine Condorelli, um, for you know for, for twenty five years. Um, we knew each other as students, and uh, she originally studied architecture and has subsequently become um, a successful artist and created East, East Side projects uh, with Gavin Wade along the way, and. It was, I suppose, having um, a network of artist collaborators historically that meant that an opportunity like this, we were able to reach out and um, quite quickly and easily uh, start working together. Um, yeah, I have the feeling that's a part in architecture that people forget to speak about a lot is the fact that it's also human connection. It's also, you can have really good feeling at university with people and then 10 years later, find them in your new project and think about them. And I think Porto Academy is really, really nice for this too, because it's a sort of very intense moment with people that come from all around the world to work together. And this thing of collaboration, I think it, it's something that can really bring more than it's not just working in group it's like collaborating together and each one brings something and it's it's something that's super valuable later in in your practice yeah at the moment i'm uh, teaching a seminar uh, course at the architectural association called the future of collaboration which nice. is um i think because we strongly believe that a lot of the uh, issues that that contemporary architecture is looking to address so around um, equal access, um, the climate emergency, um, a more diverse engagement with, with the profession and, and its audiences um, are issues that need to be addressed in company. And that, um, you know, absolutely, I think, I'm sure there will be relationships forged at, in Porto that will be important for um, future practices and certainly the seminar course at the AA I think was really about trying to demonstrate that through in the history of architecture as a profession uh, there have always been um, different types of collaboration uh, and we looked at I mean from guilds craft guilds um, in the middle ages uh, through the, the renaissance um, to uh, looking even today at what would be, is there such a thing as kind of collaborating with machines? What will uh, the impact of um, AI be on, be on design? Um, and that's something very live uh, in our projects where there are increasingly sophisticated systems involved in delivering different parts of the, um, different parts of large scale projects. And I think it's important that this this kind of question of how are they best used as a tool uh, and it's, um, it's kind of augmenting uh, human to human collaboration. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think it's the first time that I'm thinking what you're saying, like, it's like, I never thought about the work with a computer or the work with a tool as a collaboration. I'm really into collaboration with people, but it's interesting to, to think it that way. It's like, okay, I cannot insult my computer anymore if he is having a crash because I need to have a good relation with him to be sure it's working better the next time, you know? <laughs> yeah, in a way, um, I mean, like a drawing, uh, I think the care with which you um, treat a drawing you do have a a relationship with it um, uh, to what degree you know I, I think one doesn't really talk about collaborating with drawings and uh, but maybe the sense of um, drawing as a technology and that um, one could be ha show care even for these quite abstract systems and that they become then part of the the kind of culture of a project 
so that they're they're seen as um complementary to other um you know the more familiar collaborations um because i think you know the question of care in the outcome you know, the city that we want to enjoy and participate in um i think that care can be kind of found at all stages of a project um and uh, you know, obviously starting with the collaborators that you choose and um the care with which you kind of nourish those conversations i mean i i would say that you know all of the work that we do is kind of heavily around uh, discussion you know uh, whether it's between colleagues and myself in the office um or the collaborators that we had you know, i suppose and the extreme examples have been collaborations with artists in fact where um i feel like they've often challenged us to think what were the limits of our profession what we can and can't consider part of architecture because obviously they come at it from to some degree outside and that's been um something really powerful to understand is um that you can negotiate what you think is um your responsibility and what what your role is within a project that's an interesting question like how artists you're inviting in your project receive this invitation like in a way architecture is full of constraint you cannot do just what you want so how do they feel with this canva that is a little bit more let's say realistic and full full of day-to-day -day problem you need to deal with how do they how do the artists come to engage with the issues yeah um well, if I, if I look at the, the work we're doing at the moment with East Side, I think um, you know, East Side were very clear that they weren't interested in um, working on the artwork. They wanted to be in the meeting with the engineer. They wanted to be in the meeting um, with the landscape architects. They wanted to be involved in the discussions around all the technical issues and that that immersion would give them the opportunity to discover where they would intervene. And so the, the design, uh, their involvement in the design has been a product of um, like immersing them in all of the conversations that we previously assumed were you know, hours to um kind of orchestrates and um now they're they're kind of partners in that and it's meant that um probably all of the interventions they're making were ones that perhaps we wouldn't have expected um you know parts of the facade parts of the ground parts of the ceilings uh, they're kind of integral to the the body of the architecture uh, rather than being um kind of discrete elements that are you know public art that that's kind of interesting because i would have i mean of course i'm sorry to say this was preconception but i would have found the opposite so it's kind of again someone showing you that what you could consider the problem of your everyday work is still something very interesting for someone else i'm, I'm happy to learn they want to be part of 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 all of this because we say it's discussion but sometimes it's arguing with with other people which is still something very productive you know yeah i think it's also probably for a lot of architects i imagine um this question of agency like what control you have um a it, it can be quite scary to think that if that's what i if that's what i wanted out of the role this is what i'm going to relinquish <laughs> um but i think you know with it comes a, a lot of uh i was quite liberated in feeling that um i mean what we found is i mean on a recent building in the design district uh in greenwich um there's a lot of color there's a lot of different materials there's large super graphics there's figurative sculpture 
Um, and I think that that um, kind of richness of signifier it, um, in the architectural language was probably um, only made possible by the work that we've done with artists who uh, we work with, for example, Fiona Banner on Maroon for London, which is the, the boat on the roof of the South Bank uh, for the 2012 Olympics. And, you know, there were things that Fiona felt to do and knew to do, which I wouldn't have had um, either the, the idea or the, the, the courage to do. On, uh, we wouldn't have done on our own, but with Fiona, um, the prospect of a boat on a roof um, uh, that's redolent with stories became possible as architecture. And I think our subsequent work, I, I'd like to feel that, that the freedom that we enjoy in how the design evolves has been a result of this kind of plasticity around what is what is legitimately part of the project or not as an architect um yeah and i suppose the course at the aa was very much around um encouraging architects to feel like their their role is mu perhaps more more malleable and plastic than they might have um expected but that 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 um quality of working comes from collaborating with others. Yeah, we see we see this a lot in, in Actar. I mean, we publish book and when we publish book, we need to do this work of decluttering the material. And what is left in general is this sort of part of the project. It's like the moment that is a sparkle. It's like conversation between two people and something unexpected coming out. And this is in the end what makes you have good memories of your practice or good memories of the thing you're doing. So I think teaching students about the the power of collaboration is, is really, it can sound basic, but it's not at all. And I think many people, especially at school, forget about this. So really important. And I hope you will include this in your class at Porto Academy because it's a really, yeah. really great thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I think first you will, first you will make your students interact and collaborate with the Porto Academy building. So it's the first thing. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I've been looking at the work done um, in previous years and I was interested to see that perhaps the, the school is not always present in, in the outcomes. Um, but I think that f for us, um, the, the students uh, that, that have the opportunity to work with, I'm hoping that that will be very much part of what they leave Porto with is a kind of appreciation of the of the context and that that's woven into the collaborative work that we do. No for sure I mean this experience is extremely intense to be one week with other people with all these teacher in this school this special school is, is really nice because as architect we all work in in beautiful school because it's a school of architecture but the one of Alvaro Sisa is like a masterpiece and it, it's really something unique so i'm really happy that porto academy exists if it's not for everything at least for this you know absolutely yeah i mean I, there aren't many other schools like it um uh i mean i've had the opportunity to teach in a few and it's um this sort of, i'm looking forward to this being uh, <laughs> where it's like a master class uh, in we're actually working on a new school of architecture in in belgium really uh, yeah. That must be that must be a challenging program. Yeah, with with Bovenbau, uh, architecture and great. But it, I say, but it's a new. It's a it's a a, a school of architecture, Hassel, Hassel University, that's being um, relocated into a beguinage, which is a um, it's a bit like an alms house, if if the audience knows what that is. Um, so it's a it's a kind of complex of um, historic uh, accommodation for exclusively for women uh, and particularly women who are not um, part of a religious order. 
So, um, what, what I mean, it's no longer that use, and it has been um, through many different functions over the last 50 years. It's right next to Francesco Torza's Z33. So it's part of the same complex of buildings. And um, I think it used to be lots of little houses. And then as new programs were introduced, it became much larger spaces. And I think what's been interesting for us is to try and recover the sense of a domestic interior, a building made of many small homes, and that to teach architecture within that context is something very special and unique to this building. Um, so it's been re that's been really exciting is to almost, um, with limited insertions, actually make the scale of the building much more intimate again, um, to somehow compensate for the loss of all of the um, divisions in the building. So a lot of walls were removed over the years, um, but to somehow recover that character. And maybe there's a connection between where we started that um, even at the largest scale, at the scale of the city, it seems like it, for, for us, it's a really important project to try and always make space for intimate life, uh, the life between um, individuals um, and that these things should always coexist. Um, yeah, I think the other day you used to, the word um, intimacy at scale and I thought it was a really great way to, to define it, like how to learn from small scale where it's possible to do something that where you feel at home and have this same concept on a bigger scale, so nice. And yeah. very nice collaboration with Van Boer because they, I think your styles are quite, quite matching. Now I'm very, very exciting. I want to see documents. I want to see the results. Yeah. It's really no, cool. I, I'm a big fan of Dirk Sommers and Boven Bau. And I was before we had the opportunity to work together. It, it's fantastic. I, I really love their work. Um, and I think that's also, I mean, talking about collaboration, of course, that's a great way to work internationally is to have uh, partners um, that it's a, it's a real pleasure to work with and you know obviously I think one of the, the other thing that's very exciting about um, the Porto Academy is for the tutors to also meet other tutors who are working um, in other schools and so it's, it's also about building those relationships um, and I think I think Dirk Sommers I, I met originally through a lot of the architects that I've met that I subsequently work with has been through teaching and education. Yeah. Makes sense. So it's not just uh, something to learn for the student. It's also something to learn for the teacher. Use it as a, as a connection yeah. to wider your sphere. No, no, it's, it's really good. I think, I think we're going to hand here because it's a really good way to finish and to say that we're looking forward to see everyone this summer at Porto Academy. Um, if you want to register, see the schedule, see the guest, everything, you can like go on Porto Academy Instagram, go on their website and look a little bit of all of this. Are you excited to come this summer, David? Absolutely. It's just... I think it's it's I can see it just. Oh, we're we're losing you again. We're losing you again. But I'm so happy because we had 20 minutes without uh, losing the Wi-Fi. So this no, is perfect. Thank you so much, Pauline. It's really good to see you again, and very nice to be um, involved and invited to the academy. And I'm really looking forward to seeing people there in July. So so. Yeah, me too. We're, we're all here really, really happy to be part of all this project. Um, before leaving everyone, first, thanks everyone for staying with us, even if we had some technical issues. And stay tuned because we have another talk next week that will be with uh, Romulo from the Arc Daily Brazil. We'll hold the talk with uh, MAO, uh, Martin's Architecture Office. So stay tuned, look at the Instagram, we will publish the day and the date, and I promise we will have less and less technical issue and it will be beautiful. No AirPods. 
No hair pods. No. no. That's, that's what we learned today. <laughs> so thanks a lot, David. Thanks, thanks everyone. Yeah. And thanks everyone for joining. Um, see you again. Bye. Have a nice evening. Bye. Oh.